Continuing with Isaiah, it's been comforting for me the last few days reading Isaiah over again, Isaiah 30 and th chapter 30 and 31. What the context, the historical context is the that Sennacherib, the Assyrian army has, has just finished decimating Lachish and is now facing Jerusalem, asking for Jerusalem to surrender and go into exile or else they'll come in, kill all of them, and they'll starve in there. <clears throat> and what do, so King Hezekiah was the king then, and what, what, what does he do? I mean, it's scared as it is, I would be scared too. When you look out of the wall of Jerusalem and there's thousands of hundreds of thousands of Assyrian troops and mass around you. So <clears throat> at first he, he paid tribute to Assyria, it was a huge tribute. He could afford it. Yeah, gold. I don't, know, I don't know how many tons of gold, how many tons of silver. You have to go. They have to go to the temple doors, which is, which is you know inlaid with gold or silver. Scrape out those gold just to collect enough. So he couldn't do that. So what does he do? He's he's going to his his neighbor uh, Egypt to ask for help. And here is a message of Isaiah two to them said, telephone human alliances. <clears throat> so chapter 30, where he warns of his rebellious people saying, you take counsel, you go to advices, but not of me. You don't ask me for advice. You're trying to go somewhere else for advice. And that covering, you cover yourself with the covering, not of my spirit. So you add sin to sin. And you're going down to Egypt, huh? Verse two and verse, and he repeats it in verse three, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Again, God reiterated, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion is like, what is a shadow? A shadow is nothing. And that's what Egypt is. <clears throat> And what do you do? You carry, you, know, you have your asses, your donkeys, your camels carrying all kinds of goodies through the desert full of fiery, dangerous desert, full of fiery serpents and f flying vipers and what have you. The, your, your treasures, put your treasures upon bunches of camels. To do what? To go to Egypt, to a people that shall not profit you. For e the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. And their strength is Rahab, sit still. What is Rahab? Rahab means sit still, do nothing. And that's what you're going, it's like madness. What should you do? You should consult me, have a covering that is of my spirit. Verse six, eleven. 11, Isaiah says, you call on the Holy One of Israel. It's very, t uh, I don't know that it's found elsewhere, but Isaiah is very fond of using the Holy One of Israel to describe God. And also again in verse 15 of chapter 30, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. This is the Holy God, our Lord God. It's the Holy One of Israel. We, we, it's like holy, you know, we cannot stand that because we are so sinful, so dreadful. The Holy One of Israel, please, no. But God said, no, that's when you need to return and ask for counsel. 15, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be safe. Returning to me, the Holy One of Israel, you shall find rest and, sa and safety. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Yeah, oftentimes this is a favorite verse of mine. When you when you when you're so so anxious, you want to rush here and there. Maybe I should call this person to help ask for help here and there. No, God said, trust in me. Pray to me. Ask inquire of me. And in quietness and trust in quietness and confidence in the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, shall be your strength. 
And what happens? He will rescue you. And the enemies that come around uh, against you, 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. So, you know, we, we look around and say, I'm, I'm so, I'm nothing, I'm so weak, but look at the enemies and mass around me, oh Lord, my God. But return to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Then they can come at you at every direction, but they'll flee from you because of our trust in our Lord God. So at the rebuke of five shall ye flee till ye be left as a beacon on top of the mountain and as an ensign on a hill. That is what we're supposed to be when we trust in God. The ensign on the hill means the banner on the hill in the battle. You, you know, they, you, you cannot see who's winning, who's losing you, the fog of war. You know. So if you're winning, you've, you've got to rush up the hill. And the others, the enemy will f prevent you from doing that. But if you can rush up to the hill, put your banner up there, and your troops will see it and say, oh, we're winning, take courage, keep on. See, that's why there's this rush to put the banner on top of the hill. And then you will be left a beacon upon the top of a mountain. People will flock to you because your trust is in the Lord God and the victory is yours. <laughs> and blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. So this, this is really comforting to me in this terrible time of the uncertainty of the elections. So I'm, I'm assured that I will not cry anymore, that he has heard my voice, my cry, and he will answer. And he will say, this is the way, walk ye in it. So I've read this over and over, and over again many times, so it's very reassuring, especially at this time. I needed it more than anything. and. Chapter 30, verse 31, what happens to the Assyrians? Remember, they were facing the Assyrians outside the gate. Don't worry about them. The Lord says, the Assyrian will be beaten down. Verse 33 is very important. For Tophet is ordained of all, yet for the king it is prepared. He have made it deep and large. A pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. What's Tophet? Tophet is someplace outside the city walls of Jerusalem where the trash is burned. The fires are continually burning. So don't worry about the Assyrians. That's their fate. It's even now being enlarged to, to burn them. So that's where the image of Gehenna or hell comes from. You know, Tophet. The trash dump where sinful people go, sort of, where the fires burn continuously. <laughs> so don't worry about them. That's where they're ending. It is even now is being enlarged. And 30, chapter 31, the folly of reliance upon Egypt. So woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Yeah, I know, it's very attractive. You know, the Egyptian, why? Because of their horses, their war horses, trust in chariots, their chariots, there are so many, and horsemen because they're so strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also, his wise son, will bring evil. Now, the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and that those that is being helped shall fall. See, we look at rich and powerful people. Maybe they can help. Maybe, you know, especially the, the Judah was told not to look at, not to ask for help from Egypt. Yeah, I know. The horses, they're powerful horses. Horsemen are Big and strong, they have chariots. It would be like 
natural thing to do. Come and help us. But the Lord said, no, they are, the Egyptians are men, not God. Their horses are flesh, not spirit. They will fall who helps and they will fall who is being helped. <laughs> but trust, trust in the Lord always. So this, you know, I'll be, you know, the first part of Isaiah is not, you know, we don't quote from it, it's the later part because the later part is more about eschatology, you know, when, when, when the servant comes, when Christ comes. The first part is historical, but it, it has been really helpful to me, especially when Hezekiah is facing this threat and we're facing threats. So what do we do? Hezekiah went to the temple to, to pray and Isaiah gave him the message, said, tell Hezekiah not to worry. The Assyrians will not come into the walls of Jerusalem. Sennacherib will get word that he must return to Nineveh and he will return to Nineveh. And what happened to his soldiers? Look at Tophet. Tophet is even now being enlarged. Why? That night, even as Sennacherib was preparing to go back to Nineveh, the angel of the Lord killed, slaughtered 185,000 of his men, leaving him 12 to take go home with <coughs> to Nineveh. So whatever we are facing today, well, I should tell myself, I am telling myself, whatever I'm facing today, and I pray to the Lord, I said, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you did that for the kingdom of Judah, for King Hezekiah, even now I spread before you the crisis at the election ballot at the ballot box, Lord. This nation is in crisis. I spread before you, and I know your answer is swift. Even, even as we, the people of God trust you and you are trustworthy to your word to perform it. You are a righteous and just God and you demand that of us. And today we demand that of you too, to bring your righteousness and your justice into this election process where there's so much fraud. We know there is. And we pray for our president, President Trump. He is the only valid president and i demand to see your answer in this matter O oh lord O oh righteous and just god who demands that we deal righteously and justly with people the poor the orphans the virgins the widows and i ask that of you too lord thank you for this message in isaiah the um, obscure as it is but it's been really really helpful to me and I hope it has been helpful to you too even as we look at the days ahead with all kinds of uncertainty uncertainty lies with God whatever people are out there are just flesh and not we cover ourselves with the covering of the Holy Spirit and they can come at me at us and but flee in all directions